this is your sign it's time to stop scrolling and actually to get some sleep for once. As somebody who has been there, you're not gonna be able to do it from just sheer force of willpower alone. So today I'm gonna give you my best tips and tricks to help you get offline. So there's really two big contributors as to why you keep wanting to stay on the internet. And the biggest of which, at least in my opinion, is dopamine. And it comes at you from two different ways. So not only is it functioning as this kind of reward for you getting notifications and likes and all laughing at funny memes, but also dopamine works as an antagonist to a lot of the hormones that are responsible for you actually starting to feel sleepy so that you can get to bed. So in order to tackle that, the first thing that you need to do is you need to figure out what your triggers are. If you don't identify your triggers and know what's affecting you the most, because um, not everybody is, is the same for this, you're not gonna be setting yourself up in a good place to where you can actually tackle this. So once you've identified your triggers, what you wanna do is basic stuff, take off notifications, unsubscribe from what, what you can. Basically, you just want to make it so that you're not getting bombarded with things that are getting you stuck in, in the cycle. The harder for it, you make it for yourself so that you're getting stuck in this cycle, the easier it's going to be to come out on the other side of it. So once you've turned off the notifications, um, basically you want to create basically a pattern interrupt for yourself to basically kind of get yourself out of essentially the stupor that, that you're in so that you can start thinking rationally. So one good, really good way to tackle that is to put your modem on a light timer. So decide ahead of time that let's say 8 p.m., is internet bedtime, you're gonna have the light timer, turn your modem off at 8 p.m. And yeah, you can totally just go and plug your modem into the wall, but at least for me, I'd have to move a big heavy shelf thing out of the way. I'd have to mess with some other cords. So it's inconvenient enough to where I can start thinking rationally and I can not be caught up in this vicious cycle. To go along with that, another thing that um, I think is really helpful, because at least for me, if my internet goes off, the first thing that I do is that I would turn off Wi-Fi and just browse with cellular data. So I don't have an unlimited data plan for my phone. And there's other things that I need to be able to do with the internet outside of the house. So I need to like do my GPS, I need to send people texts or be able to FaceTime while I'm in a store. I need to be able to have the internet while I'm actually out and about. So if I use it up just browsing because I turned my modem off, I'm not gonna be able to do those things. And I found that's really helpful to modulate my usage as well. Another thing you can do to just kind of make it inconvenient for yourself to get into whatever your triggers are, are to delete those apps from your phone and to not save those passwords. So let's say for example, Instagram is prob problematic for me. So in order to be able to get into Instagram, I'd have to re-download the app. I'd have to reset the password in order to be able to get into that app. And what I'd do if that was problematic for you is I would have the email that it's associated with, not your primary email. So for my primary email, I'm logged in on all of my devices. It's pretty easy to get back in. But for my work email, what I'd have to do is I'd have to log onto my work computer, log into the work VPN, get into my email, reset the password. And by that time, that's enough steps to where like, ugh, it's, you know, it's not worth the effort. I'm just going to read a book instead. Another thing I've had really good luck with in the past is to use a browser extension that you can blacklist either certain websites or the internet overall. I think the one that I've used previously, I I think it's called SiteBlock. Um, and yes, you can override it and get back into it. But for the one that I was using, you had to type like 85 random characters in order to get back in. And it was like capitals and special characters and numbers. And it was annoying enough to where like I'd have to type it at least a couple times in order to be able to get back in there to where it helps kind of snap me again uh, out of the super that I was in, be like, eh, no, it's not worth it. This is too annoying to do. So I'm just gonna not do it. One more thing that you can try if you find that you're the super determined type of person and like you're plugging your modem back in 
and you're typing all 85 characters to log back into the internet is you can switch your device over to grayscale. And it sounds overly simplistic, but browsing in just black and white, it's very dull, it's very boring, it's not very fun, like you don't wanna keep doing it. And I found that to be incredibly useful as well. Now, the one thing that I would caution you against that is if you're gonna do that, don't go browse a whole bunch in grayscale and then switch it over to color because the color is like hyper stimulating. I, I, I don't know why it's so stimulating, but it makes you wanna keep being on it even more than you wanted to before. So definitely be careful of that if you try that tip out. By the way, if you're finding this video helpful, give it a thumbs up so I know you're enjoying it. So the other reason that you wanna keep browsing on your device, um, other than the dopamine, it's also the source of light as well. And I don't just mean blue light. Um, I definitely have blue light blocking glasses, but I've noticed a difference between being on my device with my blue light blocking glasses and modulating my light usage. By changing my light usage, I have gotten from 20 to 30 minutes to fall asleep to like five minutes to get, get to sleep. So it's definitely looking, worth looking into as well. Um, at the end of the day, basically what it comes down to is just having a source of illumination really close to your face. And although we're blocking the blue light, there's just other light in that device that's making you want to stay, stay awake. So basically what I found is that the light makes me stay up. So I'm on my device because I'm not sleeping. So the light makes me want to stay up. So I'm on my device more. And you just kind of get caught into a cycle with that as well. So what I've done as far as combating that, first off, using the tips in the first part of this video to help me actually want to get off my devices. But then in addition to that, just changing how light is in my house has also really helped as well. So what I do is I found it's incredibly helpful to use smart devices. So I have smart bulbs um, and what'll happen is at eight o'clock at my house, this light over here that'll flip on, the light in the living room will flip on, and that's my cue that I need to start my bedtime routine. And I found because I'm doing my bedtime routine, I'm like taking a shower and I'm doing my skincare routine and flossing my teeth and all that, I don't have the opportunity to be mindlessly scrolling on my device. Whereas previously, maybe if I wasn't modulating my usage as much, maybe I would be like, oh, shoot, like I'm not gonna floss, floss tonight, which is it. Um, so by doing that, not only am I helping myself to get to the point where it's actually easier for me to fall and sleep because the bedtime routine is a cue to my brain, like, hey, we're going to be getting to bed soon. But then also I'm doing other healthier habits as well. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so if you think that you have a genuine problem and you're like, gosh, I don't think any of this stuff in this tip is going to work. Like I am way too determined. Like I think I have a genuine problem. There is zero shame in getting professional help for something like this. The algorithms for so many of these things are specifically designed to keep you addicted and to keep you want to keep doing it. So there is zero shame in needing help to break out of that habit. Um, at the end of the day, I feel like the internet is a necessity in this day and age, and it's a tool just like having electricity or having plumbing is a tool. And it's not that you wanna eliminate the usage altogether, you just wanna get a happy medium. So hopefully those tips helped out. Sweet dreams.